Hey everyone, welcome back to Angela's Aging Essentials. I have recently, well I say recently, as soon as it came out, I watched the Casey Anthony Peacock. I mean, do we want to call it a documentary or in my opinion, do we want to call it just more lies? But I want to talk a little bit about that today. I want to talk about some inconsistencies that I just continue to see in Casey Anthony. I'm also going to be doing my skincare, and if I just continue to ramble, maybe even some makeup, I will list everything that I use down in the description, so don't forget to subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, smash that bell, and be sure and catch my day two of my three days of Christmas giveaway. I have a shorts that is going to run until December the 10th, so be sure and watch that. It's a beautiful piece of Kendra Scott jewelry along with some other goodies. So don't miss out. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to my channel, pick a number, leave that number in the comment section of that short. Easy peasy. Let's jump into this tangent that I feel like I need to go on. I want to start off by saying everything that I share with you guys is from my knowledge of the trial. I have a daughter that was born in July of 2008 and this whole Anthony case happened July of 2008. So I was at home with my daughter and watching this all over the news. This was a highly publicized trial. Um, it was all over the news channel. So, you know, I have been in it from the beginning. I watched the entire trial. So everything that I share with you guys is just my opinion. It's my own opinion that I have formed from watching the trial, following the trial, watching this documentary that Peacock has just released. It's all the information that I have gathered from that and I have formed my own opinion. So I really do encourage you to not ever watch somebody's video and base your opinion off of what they share. They can be inaccurate. They can be bringing you nothing but lies themselves. So don't ever just say, say, I'm just going to believe what Angela believes or whoever you're watching. Go and do your own extensive research. Gather all the research that you've done. Just go down the rabbit hole of filling yourself full of knowledge as far as researching the case and then make sure to form your own opinion off of the research that you do yourself. And I will also say that everything that I'm going to share with you guys is allegedly for entertainment purposes only. It's so ridiculous, but you know, again, it's my opinion. There's no factual basis to my opinion other than what I have gathered from very, very public information. I watched this very, very public information and I form my own opinion, but again, here we are. We want to make sure that we are obeying YouTube's policies. And so I got to throw that in there. But you guys, after I watched this Peacock documentary, I was livid. I was completely livid. And I also want to say, you know, I got to be really careful with words that I use. So if you ever hear me just use a letter of a word, then use your imagination, fill in the blanks, because I want to be really careful. I don't ever want to do anything to, you know, cause my channel any type of distress. Um, so just know, use a little bit of common sense and figure out what I'm talking about. You know the old saying, can a leopard change its spots? Absolutely. I am a walking proof that you can absolutely change your ways. I was an addict for two decades and I have been sober for almost 10 years. During addiction, I was a liar, a schemer, a scammer. I manipulated everything that comes with being a really horrible person was me when I was in active addiction. For the past 10 years, I completely transformed my life and I am known to be reliable, dependable, trustworthy, and, you know, so can a leopard change its spots? Yes. I think in saying that, that, you know, a lot of times people say past behavior is a good representation of future behavior. And although that is true, you know, 
for me, let's just use me for an example. It took the full 10 years of my recovery to get back in a place with people where they knew that they could trust me, that they could depend on me, that I was reliable, that I was a excellent person. And I know that about myself. I know that I am a very, very good person. I had to really put in the time to change my life. And so my behavior is a really good indicator of the kind of person that I am. Also, taking accountability for your wrongs, for the things that you have done that you are ashamed of, the things that you have done to other people, whether that was stealing from somebody, lying to somebody, taking accountability for that, whether that's apologizing to that person, replacing what you stole, whatever, you do you, but that's just what I mean, taking accountability for all of the really crappy things that you did. So let's just kind of start with the beginning of what happened with the Anthony case. I'm gonna give a really quick rundown. There are all kind of videos out there, so I don't wanna go down the rabbit hole of what's going on. Just about everybody knows who she is at this point, especially this Peacock documentary is really gonna bring you know, new audience as far as, you know, the newer generation of people that we have. But I'm just going to give a really quick rundown of who she is. Casey Anthony had a daughter named Kaylee Anthony. And Casey's daughter, Kaylee, went missing. And she was missing for 31 days before Casey even said, hey, my daughter's missing. And the only reason she said she was missing then is because Casey's mother was like, where in the heck is our granddaughter Kaylee at? So she finally admitted that she had been missing for 31 days. She went through a very long list of lies, straight up lies, proven lies that, um, you know, just led all of these police officers, these detectives, these investigators down these rabbit holes of Kaylee's here, Kaylee's there, blah, 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 blah. None of it panned out. Casey lied about everything. She said she worked at Universal Studios. She hadn't been working there for two years. Even went as far with her lie as to go to Universal Studios after she ain't even worked there for two years with the police and walks in and, you know, is waving at people. Hey, y'all. Hey, I hadn't seen you since last Friday. Y'all have a good weekend. And then she realizes the gig is up and turns around and says, I actually don't work here. So she lied about everything. She also was a thief. She stole checks from her friend was going shopping at Target, writing checks, living her best dadgum life. Also, the 31 days that Kaylee was supposedly missing, leading up till after the public knew Kaylee was missing, until Casey got arrested, Casey partied. And when I tell y'all she partied, she partied hard. Partied in bars, got lit like a tater chip, was just living her best life while her daughter was supposedly missing. She didn't know what happened to her daughter. She was missing. She didn't know where she was, blah, 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 blah. Then she even goes as far as to get a tattoo that says Bella Vita. And you go do your own research as far as what that means. Um, it's a French word. In my own words, it means out there living your best life. So, but that ain't really what it means. So, go do your own research as far as what it means. So, then all this happens and then they find poor little Kaylee's body. And after they find her body, just a few miles down the road from where the Anthonys lived, Casey, Kaylee, and her parents... Casey Anthony's parents lived in this house. Kaylee's body was found just a few miles down the road from where they lived in Florida. After her body was found, 
it kind of changed everything. This went from a missing child now to a deceased child. Um, and so everything just kind of went crazy from there. To make a long story short, so I just don't keep going on about this to catch you guys up to speed. Casey was initially arrested and was going to trial for murder of Kaylee. They had this trial. A lot of things came out in this trial. I really, really encourage you to go and watch the trial because it is crazy. There are Lots and lots of things that were involved in this trial that came out, you know, family secrets, skeletons in the closet, blah, 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 blah. But Casey ended up getting proved not guilty for the murder of her daughter, Kaylee. They said, not guilty, you're free to go. She did actually end up having to serve time a couple of years for stealing her friend's checks and also lying to the police. So she did end up doing time, I believe it was three years. But as far as being charged with the murder of her daughter, she was not charged with that crime. They actually proved that she was not guilty. The jury decided and they said, we don't think she's guilty. And so she was let off and never convicted of taking the life of her daughter. This has been 10 years. So we're fast forward in 10 years. Nobody was ever held responsible for taking the life of Kaylee. There has never been justice served for that poor little girl. And Casey went her own way. Her parents went their own way. You know, there was a bunch of stuff come out at the trial that kind of put a huge wedge between this family. And in my opinion, because Casey's full of crap and she's a liar. And so she broke up her family. And also, in my opinion, she's also the one for entertainment purposes only and allegedly that is responsible for Kaylee. Let's move forward 10 years. I knew I wouldn't be able to do my my skincare and talk to you guys, especially about this case, cause it just infuriates me. I mean, it just absolutely drives me bananas. So the Peacock documentary comes out and I hate really even calling it a documentary because I think a documentary is something that a lot of research goes into and in my opinion the only thing that went into this documentary documentary on peacock was casey getting up there and continuing to be the liar that she is and she's the victim she's always the victim and blaming everything that ever went wrong in her life from her having a pimple on her forehead this is my own words. It was somebody else's fault. It was her mama's fault because she didn't buy her no face wash. Anyways, Angela tried to stay focused. So we fast forward 10 years. This Peacock series comes out and you have Casey Anthony for the first time since the trial happened in 2008 coming forward and giving her version of events. And y'all, let me tell you, when I tell you that when I watched this, it's a three-part series, by the way. And when I got through about the first five minutes of the first episode, I was about to lose my dadgum mind. I could not believe, I still can't believe it. So, it's just so much and it's just so absolutely unfreaking believable so in this documentary <clears throat> if you have not watched it stop the video go watch it then when you get done watching it come back because if you haven't watched it i don't want to do any spoiler alert so a spoiler alert if you haven't watched it run watch it and then come up back and and we can talk about it because i don't want to mess it up for you if you haven't seen it so of course during this peacock series i gotta quit calling it a documentary because in my opinion it, it ain't 
in this series, Casey Anthony talks about how, you know, how horrible her life has been since losing Casey. I mean, since losing Kaylee. Hello? Hello? You know, she just is so, um, you know, she's just a victim and this changed her life and everybody hates her to the point where she can't even go out in public, y'all. She cannot even go out in public. She can't have no social media because, you know, she was the most hated woman in America, in my opinion, for good reason. But her, you know, this has just affected her life. You know, something she didn't even do has affected her life to the point where she has a hard time even leaving the house. Meanwhile, there are all kinds of videos showing her living it up in the bar, living it up at the poker table, gambling, living it up, you know, calling the police because her and this other girl were dating the same um, cop in this little city and the one girl threw a drink on her and she filed a report because she was damp. She was still damp from the drink. She has not been in hiding for 10 years, living in the basement with no electricity, no water, no phone, no friends, being a hermit. She has been out there in society living her best dadgum life. There's uh, evidence out there to support that. Her defense attorney oh my gosh this just kills me this just burns me up who was also oj simpson simpson's defense attorney um she actually lived with him for a very long time after the trial and 10 years later continues to work for him um He's in this Peacock series giving his own opinion about everything and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, so I'm going to really try and stay focused here, you guys. It just burns me all the way up. Um, so, he appears and he talks about how, you know, hard it's been on her and blah, 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 blah. And how, you know, Kaylee definitely was, um, you know, unalived. But that uh, Casey definitely didn't do it. So, then Casey starts giving her, um, you know, her side of the story. And she comes out with these allegations, which are not new allegations. She also said this during the trial that um, from the age of 12, I believe, you guys, I don't have my notes in here because I just wanted to do this because I'm mad about it. I'm pissed off. That... Um, I think it was from 12 that her daddy had been emming her. There's one of those letters, put the rest with it. It's one of those things that sick individuals do to other people. And so she had been getting emmed for a very, very long time. And um, that the last thing that she remembered was she was sleeping and Kaylee was in the bed with her. And when she woke up, Kaylee wasn't in the bedroom, and so she went running outside, and when she got outside by the pool, there was her daddy holding little Kaylee, and Casey also, you know, touching Kaylee, said she was wet and heavy and felt cold, and so her daddy takes this little girl and, and says, I'll deal with this, and do 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 here goes Casey, just, okay. You just deal with it. Okay. And continues to live her best life. Here's where I have the problem with the fact that she says that. Really quickly, let me say, she also says because her daddy emmed her, that that's one of the reasons why she kept Kaylee away from her daddy. That is a flat out lie. She did not keep Kaylee away from her daddy. Her daddy and her mama, Casey's mom and daddy, had George... He had that baby girl all the time. All the time he had her. Okay, so that's not protecting and shielding your daughter from your daddy who supposedly emmed you. That's a lie. You are a liar and you lied about that. Second of all, if your daddy has supposedly been emming you, then 
You don't trust him. You're 12. You know at 12 that this isn't right. Okay? You know that. You know that something's wrong with him. So you don't trust him. You know, she goes on to say how she would just pretend to be asleep and how, um, you, go watch the series. She just really goes into detail about it. So, you know she don't trust him. So, if you run out there by the pool and you see George holding Kaylee and she see, and Kaylee, you can clearly see something's wrong. You know, she's not responsive. She's cold. She's wet. Something's wrong. And this man that you don't trust that does horrible things to you says, you just wait right here, honey. I'll handle this. Really? Are you actually kidding me right now? That is the story that you are trying to make people believe. Y'all really think that after she, after she goes out there and he's holding Kaylee and all this happens and he tells her, I'll handle this, that she just sits back and says, okay, I'll just sit here and wait for you to get back. From there, she goes on to say that she was just following his lead. For those 31 days, she was just doing what he told her to do. He kept saying, I'll handle this. You know, I'll handle this. I have such a hard time believing if, if I was in those shoes, if I was in Casey's shoes, first of all, when I work, walked out there by the pool and saw that supposedly situation, I would have handled that completely different. Um, 911, I have an emergency help. Um, but let's just say that we get past that. Let's just say we're like, okay, you handle that. I mean, not really, you guys, but I'm just really trying to um, make this make sense. I'm really trying. So, that you say, okay, you handle that. But then, for 31 days after that, when you supposedly keep questioning your dad, where's Kaylee? Oh, Kaylee's fine. You know, she's fine. You just keep doing what I say and everything's going to be fine. And then one day all of this is going to make sense. And you say, okay, you guys, this is your child. This is your child that you gave birth to, that you, that grew in your belly, that you squeezed out. This is your child, your flesh and blood. This is your baby. This is your baby girl. And for 31 days, you just keep going with the narrative that you want us to believe that you just kept saying, okay, I'll just sit here and wait. You tell me what to do next and I'll just sit here and wait. That, in my opinion, is a bunch of crap. When George Anthony and Miss Anthony come to visit Casey Anthony in jail and Peacock shows you that little clip of it, they don't show you the entire clip. So let me encourage you to go and watch that because I think that that is a very crucial part of kind of showing the relationship that George and Casey have. You know, he is, is telling her, you know, if something happened, you know, please let us know. Like, if you've done something, um, you know, please let us know. Like, we want to try to help you. We we want you and we want you and Kaylee back home. Like, that, it's it's not the same without y'all there. We want y'all back. And I think in that conversation, you can see the Anthony's and also Casey Anthony. Uh, you know, they're talking over the phone, but you can see it. I think that, that 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 is actually a very real and raw conversation. And in my opinion, when George is telling that to Casey, you know, and he tells her, you know, we, we love you and, you know, we just want to get you out of here. We don't want you to even have to stay in here one more day. And, you know, he tells her that he loves her and he and he misses her and he misses Kaylee. And, and Casey gets upset. I think that is a very real and raw emotion when she gets upset. And in my opinion, she gets upset because she misses them too. And she misses her daughter that, in my opinion, she was responsible for her, what happened to Kaylee. And I think that if that's a really good situation for us to pause and pay attention to. Because if you were supposedly following George's direction, you were going with the narrative that, you know, 
he supposedly was, was telling you to go, then in that moment, why weren't you saying, well, you know, I'm only in jail because I'm following your directions and you told me that you, you got this. And I've been doing what you said, and here I am in jail. Jail is not a fun place. And as soon as you get in the, in there, the second you get in there, you won't out. I've been to jail. I know. You won't out. So the fact that she's trying to make everybody believe that she's just sitting there still doing what he says instead of saying, Dad, where is Kaylee? The last time I saw her, you were with her by the pool and you told me, I got this. Just follow what I tell you to follow. And following you has led me to be in jail, possibly fighting for my life. At this point, she has been arrested for murder and she's staying in jail because the bond is so high. So she has to stay in jail until the trial. Get me out of here. You're the one that has Kaylee. Get me out of here. But she isn't doing that, you guys. She's having a conversation, you know, well, I miss you too, Daddy, and I know that you love me, and I love you too. I mean, you guys, please make it make sense. In my opinion, she is so full of crap. It is not even funny. She is a liar. I think she is still a liar. The only reason why I don't think that she's, um, what's a good word? that she lies like she used to is because she's not surrounded by as many people as she used to be. You know, used to she had her family and now now she has this new family. And in my opinion, because this new family, this attorney and this defense team believe her and support her, then she can just continue to lie to them because they believe and support her lies. And also really quickly, I want to touch on the part of the peacock series where um casey gets really upset at kaylee's service at her uh memorial because of something that george says so george is up there talking about his granddaughter kaylee and he says you know how there's you know nothing like a hug from a child and how he misses smelling her sweat. I have seen so many people talk about how cringy that that is. And how, you know, they're like, yeah, that's a little bit weird. That kind of gives me the creep, but creeps. But I just want to give you guys my opinion about that. I'm not a grandparent, but everybody that I know that is a grandparent including my own parents, especially my mother, was not the best mama to me. Um, she was actually a horrible mama to me. But when it comes to being a grandma to my girls, she is right up there with the best grandma that my girls could, could have. She is really, really good to my girls. And so the saying is, if you think you love your children, wait until you have grandchildren. And I can totally see that. The love that you have for your children and then they have children, it's like your, your little baby's baby. You know, I've heard so many people talk about how wonderful it is to be a grandparent. And in my opinion, what George says about smelling her sweat I don't think is weird or creepy at all. And again, this is my opinion. But I don't think it's weird and creepy at all. I think he went from having a sweet little granddaughter that lived in the home with him her entire life. Ever since Casey gave birth to Kaylee, they lived with the Anthonys. So he goes from having this you know, sweet, precious little granddaughter at home to all of a sudden not knowing where she is. And when she was at home, him, George, and Cindy, I believe her name's Cindy. We'll just say George and Miss Anthony because I don't want to get it wrong. They watch Kay Kaylee all the time. You know, they take her to the park. They go swimming with her. Like, they do all kind of things with her. 
And so he goes from seeing little Kaylee every single day to playing with her outside, to doing things with her, to not having her at all. You know, my little dog went to heaven on Easter and it's like, I miss the way my dog smelled. So I don't think that it's weird or creepy at all that he said that. Not at all. And that's just my opinion. And, you know, I just ask you guys, anybody out there that thinks it's weird and creepy, that's your opinion. I ain't coming for you for having your opinion. So please don't come for me for having my opinion. But that's my opinion. I don't think that it's creepy. I think he misses his granddaughter and he would do anything at all to just smell her stinky little feet one more time. Smell her sweaty hair one more time. I think he's grieving for his granddaughter that has been unalived by somebody. And at the time, it was supposedly his daughter that unalived her. So, I just wanted to mention that real quick because they're just, I don't think it's weird. And I think that the only reason why Casey acted, in my opinion, the way that she did whenever she sees that clip is because it fits the narrative. It fits the narrative that she's trying to make us believe. And she just goes on to say how, how creepy it was. And, and WTF, she just... You know, she just can't believe that he said that and, you know, and all this. But it's like, why can't you believe he said that? That's his granddaughter that he pretty much raised because Casey didn't have a job for two freaking years. So where'd she get the money to take care of Kaylee? All you mamas out there know it costs money to have children. You have to feed them. You have to clothe them like it costs money. You know, so he raised this child. He financially supported this child. I also think her, I think Casey's the kind of person who, um, when she needs the waterworks to roll, honey, it's like flipping on a switch. When she needs those tears to roll down her face, she can turn them on. And when she don't, she can turn them right off. So, you know, it just makes me sick to think that nowadays she just, um, she's brutally honest. She tells the truth. I mean, give me a freaking break. Give me a break. You are a liar. And if any of you go back and watch the trial and watch the clips of her out there, woo, woo, living her best life, Compared to what she said on the Peacock series, you will see that she is a liar. She is a habitual liar. A pathological liar. In my opinion, she does not know how to tell the truth. So, I mean, what do you guys think? Are you, do you, you know, do y'all think that it was creepy what he said um, do you not think it was creepy? I will always be respectful of your opinions. After all, we are all adults and we all have opinions. Opinions are kind of like mouth holes. We all have a mouth hole. So, you know, everybody's got an opinion. So, respectfully let me know yours. And, you know, I just, I'm just really upset because they're just trying to paint this narrative that, you know, that this was all George's fault. And in my opinion, it just does not add up. You know, George um, had, had faults. Everybody has faults. None of us are Jesus, so none of us are perfect. So he had flaws. He had things about him that were not good. He had an affair on his wife. He supposedly had a gambling problem. But in my opinion, I just don't think that he was the kind of person that Casey has tried to paint him as being. And my heart goes out to him because 
I just think it's terrible to be in a situation where your own daughter is accusing you of all these things because in reality, she's actually the one that's responsible for it, but no, 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 no. That can't dare come out. She has a reputation that she has to protect. Give me a break. And really quickly, I just want to add that if you are somebody who, you know, like myself, has experienced, you know, something like Casey is claiming and alleging, then my heart goes out to you. Um, you know, it really does. And I am never going to be one of those people that tries to make light of a situation like that. Um, you know, I've, I've been, I've had a hard life too. Um, but I just don't think when I look at, when I look at my own situation and, um, the experience that I had, uh, never, ever, ever did I once ever leave my children with anybody that I knew that I could not trust. Ever. Not once. And to me, that speaks volume. I think that that is a red flashing light in big old bold letters that I just have a hard time getting past. So, you know, for me, that right there is pretty much one of the things, other than the fact that she's just a liar and nothing she says adds up. But for me, and because of my own experience, you know, when you are a child, you aren't necessarily in the situation where you can remove yourself from a, you know, situation that you're in. But when you get to be an adult, you can. You can completely remove yourself from that situation. And when you are a mother, you are responsible for protecting your children. And the kind of mama that I am, honey, I will go down fighting and burning for my children. And I will protect them at all costs. That is what I have done their entire life. And that is what I will continue to do. So it is really hard for me to believe that he was this kind of man, but yet you chose to still leave your daughter with him. But mind you, she says she didn't. She says she didn't leave Kaylee with him. Bull crap. Bull crap you didn't. You left her with him all the time. So, that's also another lie. You guys, I just needed to uh, vent. I just needed to vent. And I just want to encourage you, if you are somebody, again, who does not know much about this case, to please, please, please do not watch Peacock without watching all of the stuff that happened 10 years, you know, watch both of those before you form your opinion about what happened. Because I'm just so afraid that there are going to be a lot of, you know, our new generation people that are going to watch that and that are going to believe her and be sure to watch both. Be sure to watch everything that you can find about it. Research that information that you find. And then form your own opinion without just basing your opinion on the Peacock series. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I had in mind to maybe do all of my makeup. But you guys know if you ever hang out with me that I get sidetracked. I cannot walk, talk, and chew gum at the same time. But as always, I have the best time hanging out with you guys. I hope you guys are getting really excited for the holidays because the holidays are almost here. It's going to be super fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a wonderfully blessed day and we will see you in the next video.